Alrighty, we have spun around in the chair, we're sitting in front of the laptop, and we're gonna run you through as kind of quickly but informatively as I can with how to set up your first document or your first file if you are new to the world of CNCing. You're gonna open up, in this particular case, we're using vCarve, we know there are lots of software options out there, and if you wanna see us show you these same basic steps with other software, comment below, let us know. Otherwise, we're gonna roll through it with vCarve because it is typically the software I slash we use the most. Now, within that little pop-up, you are going to get a few different options, single-sided, double-sided, and rotary for the job type. If you're new to the whole world of CNCing, single-sided is where you've got your material on your wasteboard and you carve on one side. Double-sided would be the same thing, material on your wasteboard, carve on one side, create some, basically they're called index holes on one side, create some index holes in your wasteboard, flip it over, carve on the other side. Job size is pretty self-explanatory. It is the piece of material that you are carving. I've recommended this throughout a number of videos that if you are doing something that is a complex or you're worried about making a mistake carve, try to have your test piece the same size as your final piece. It just makes it a true to life replication basically of what you're carving. So you're not changing your document size, things aren't moving around, you're not worrying about changing X, Y, and Z and all that stuff. It is basically an apples to apples comparison. So you enter in your dimensions, you know, width, height, and thickness. And then again, that would all be inches or millimeters depending on what unit of measure you like to use. Z zero position, material surface or machine bed. As far as I'm concerned, this is 100% a personal preference thing. There's probably some specific applications where one would be better than the other, but by and large, I have not run into any issues and I use material surface exclusively. So that would be where your material is on your wasteboard. You either use a, a touch plate or auto zero touch plate or, you know, the good old paper method and you find your Z zero position off of your material surface. The same would be said if you used machine bed. Um, again, Personal preference, I just never did, uh, probably because my material was in the way. That's kind of the way I looked at it, where if I'm trying to find my Z0 and my material's there, then my material's now in the way of using the machine bed. XY datum. Again, I feel this is very similar to Z0 position. I don't think it makes a difference in the quality or the speed of your carve or anything else. It is strictly a personal preference. Again, most of the people that I know and speak with and that are carving are using bottom left just because it's a default. Uh, using offset is fairly self-explanatory. If you, for whatever reason, maybe you had a clamp in a position at your zero point on the board and you wanted to use an offset, you would just click that on, type in your dimension of how far you want it to move X or Y in an offset, and it would now know this is now my zero from here to there. Find your X, Y, zero, and then just move it over manually within G sender uh, and call that your zero point. So there's two different ways to kind of get to the same point. Point. Modeling resolution, again, fairly self-explanatory, but you would think that, you know, the higher it's going to be slower, but you get better quality. Standard is going to be the fastest and gives you less quality, but for everything I've done, it has worked at standard material settings. This is 100% aesthetic within your, uh, your working file. It is not going to affect anything that you carve. It is strictly to be a representation of what material you're carving so you can get a better vibe for what it's gonna look like. You know, if you're carving something in, let's say walnut, but it looks like pine, it doesn't have the same feel, but it is 100% not necessary. And more often than not, just because I forget, I don't change it. So once you're happy with that, you can hit okay and you have now set up your document. Once you have created a document, you have this little toolpath tab over here. Ah, see how he likes to pop up and he likes to go away. So if you want him to stay put, you can hit the little pin similarly to other software that has the ability and if you want it to go away, you can just unpin it. So that's simple enough. If you have created a document and for whatever reason you need or want to change the size, you can always go back into here and set the job dimensions again. It literally brings up that menu. You can change everything to your heart's delight, just keeping in mind that if you change it after you started a project, it may affect the things that you have in your project. So keep that in mind. That's about it for one-sided carving. We'll hit up two-sided carving. So we're gonna create a new file again. If this is your option and you select it, it gives you a nice little diagram here showing you that side one and side two, you know, side one, side two, it's pretty good. Your job size does not change. Same thing, your Z0 position has now changed because now you can go from your material surface or your machine bed, or you can zero off the same side, which is just a confusing way of saying the top and then the bottom, which if you click it on, so like I was saying in the last one, the one-sided, I prefer material surface. So if I'm doing a two-sided carve, I'm no matter if the front or the back, I zero off the material. You can do the same thing for the machine bed, right? Top or bottom, doesn't matter, front or back, 
you're still going off the machine bed, or you can zero off the same side, which just means, see the little red dot it went from up here to down here? So it just means you zero off the material surface for this particular instance. XY datum has not changed with two-sided, double-sided. It is still the same, total choice. And your only other option that pops up here is the flipping direction between sides. And again, it will not affect the quality of your carve or I don't believe the time of things. It is strictly whether or not you're gonna flip it this way or this way. So that's about it. So you have your double-sided carve, you're all good to go. Now I'm gonna hit okay. This material setup button becomes very important once you start importing models and you're doing that. So I'm gonna import a model really quickly. So we'll hit the set button. And currently you'll see that the thickness is the same as we had in our initial setup. The XY datum is the same and the Z zero top are all the same. What is a little bit different is this model position in material. Now, right now I have a double-sided carve set up, but I don't have a model brought in. So that double-sided carve is like a sheet of paper, basically, it, it, there's nothing to it. And if you move your model position, which you'll see this, it doesn't look horribly different, but this color on top is different than this color on the sides. And if I drag this down, you'll see a little line. So that's that little line for all intents and purposes is my model positioned within my material. I'm gonna import a model now and I'm gonna show you how this actually comes into effect when you're doing a double-sided carve. So you're gonna import your model. And again, we may time-lapse this, we may not. I am going to put this on the right orientation and I'm going to scale this to, uh, what am I looking at? I'm gonna scale this to what? This is 0.5. There we go. Do do import. Okie dokie. So we have our model imported now and you'll see that this little icon diagram has changed substantially from what it was where it all looked like it was kind of this darker color. Now we have a bigger cube of this lighter color and that lighter color represents our model within our material. So you have the ability to drag this up and down and this is why I'm showing you this for two sided because in one sided this doesn't really exist. All this is giving you the ability to do is either have your model start carving right at the very, very surface of your material right at the very, very bottom of your material, or kind of in the middle somewhere where you're happy. Depending on what your model is, depending on the type of wood and how the surface is and all kinds of different factors will affect where you want to do this. I like to go somewhere in the middle. The dark colors are gonna get carved away, leaving you with the light color in the middle, which means that your model will be basically out of like fresh wood. There's no worry about a surface defect or anything funky affecting it. And that's why I wanted to show you the model position. If you re-import your model, if you mess with some of the other settings that we'll get into in another video, you'll have to visit this again and keep an eye on this, but that is about it for two-sided carving. Um, your rapid Z-gaps above the material and your home start position settings, the 0.2 inches, which I couldn't tell you what the millimeter conversion is, uh, and 0.8 are, th they work. The, unless you have a specific reason to change them, all it is doing is pulling your bit up um, and starting your position safely above your work. The software knows what it's doing. Those are pretty standard, pretty good defaults, and you're good to go. So we've covered the bases for how you'd set up your document. It's pretty straightforward. A lot of it is very self-explanatory, but we wanted to give the super, super newbies who have never even opened the software a quick rundown of those two things. The next video that we're gonna get to covering topics, there are gonna be everything from uh, creating tool paths, importing vectors, tracing images, saving tool paths, working with previews. We've got four or five or six or 10 or however many of these videos coming out that are gonna be hopefully pretty quick. We hope you found it helpful. Uh, again, keep your eyes open. Lots of more videos coming out with this stuff and uh, now we'll see you around the CNC.